Virginia Linez, Chief of Staff to Shelby County Mayor Lee Harris. And I'm Dominique Winfrey, a mayoral fellow in the fourth quarter of my fellowship. We're the co-producers of today's Southern Justice Summit and want to take a moment to let you know how you can get the most, the absolute most, out of today's virtual event. We began planning the Southern Justice Summit a few months ago and put planning into overdrive when we realized that the community wants action. Real action. Right now. The community wants to create a more just system, eliminate police brutality, and end racial inequity and injustice. That's why today we've recruited six moderators, Andre, Frankie, Jessica, Madison, Candace, and Jamal. 19 speakers and one exceptional keynote president, Mark Morial, who you'll hear at 1.30. In light of the global pandemic that 2020 decided to dish out, we had to take things virtual. But that doesn't mean we can't work together. First, the chat feature is available for your use throughout the conference. You can chat with other attendees, share resources, and save a few of the resources that we share with you. Second, each panel will include a Q&A session. That's right, 15 minutes will be designated for you to weigh in with questions after each panel, as well as the keynote. Just click on Q&A near the bottom of your window and submit your question. The moderators will address as many questions as they can. Finally, we've created a Facebook group so that all attendees can connect with each other. Join us on Facebook at Southern Justice Summit Working Group. Like I said, just because we can't be together in person doesn't mean that we can't connect and grow lasting professional relationships. Dominique, myself, and a couple other team members will be available in each panel. We're also dropping our contact information in the chat window right now to make sure that you can reach us directly if you run into any challenges. Periodically, the moderators will share links to upcoming panels, and you may also access the panel schedules in your summit workbook. I'll see you when I introduce National Urban League President Mark Moriel later today at 1.30. But for now, allow me to introduce Shelby County Commissioner Tammy Sawyer. Enjoy today's event. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Southern Justice Summit. I am Commissioner Tammy Sawyer, and it is an honor to welcome you to what I'm sure is going to be a powerful and impactful day for change making and idea exchanging. It is very exciting that this event is being hosted right here, even though virtually, in my hometown of Memphis, Tennessee. As a, Shelby, as a Shelby County Commissioner, I strive every day to ensure that the voices of those who are often the least heard are uplifted in my community. And I am proud that the panel of speakers today is going to do just that. First, I'd like to thank Mayor Lee Harris and his support team, Chief of Staff Danielle Inez and Dominique Winfrey for bringing this amazing event together and ensuring that we have an opportunity this summer, a very important summer in the history of our country. The lives of George Floyd, <clears throat> excuse me, the lives of George Floyd, Tony McDade, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, and so many more names that we have to say over and over again are now finally our voices saying that Black Lives Matter, saying that we have to change what the criminal justice system in this country looks like. And here we are doing just that. I also want to welcome Mark Morial, president of the Urban League, as well as Ms. Tanya Cecily Bayman, president of the Memphis Urban League, and all of the Southern regions. You are leaders who are doing such great work across the South. We are, as Southern states, the battleground for this work for equity, for criminal justice rights, for Black and Brown people, whether it is from how we are reimagining policing in our community to how we are supporting immigrants in our community. I cannot state enough how important it is going to be to walk away from, this, from today's panel with not just inspiration, but with ideas that we put in action. We cannot wait 
any longer to put action behind our words. So after you're done today, when you wake up tomorrow, take the passion that you've learned from the leaders you're going to hear from, whether it's attorney Wesley Bell in St. Louis or our own city councilman, JB Smiley, and take that and put it into action. Make the change, as our dear President Obama once said, be the change that you wanna see in the world. And as I always say, we can't wait to be that change. So let's get started and let's do this today. Thank you again for this phenomenal lineup and I can't wait to learn from each of you. Welcome to Memphis. Thank you, Commissioner Sawyer. Greetings. I am Tanya Cecily Bayman, President and CEO of the Memphis Urban League. Greetings from the Memphis Urban League and my Urban League colleagues across the Southern region, specifically the Urban League of Middle Tennessee, the Urban League of Greater Chattanooga, the Urban League of Greater Knoxville, the Birmingham Urban League, and the Urban League of Lexington, Kentucky. We're excited to collaborate with Mayor Lee Harris on the Southern Justice Summit. You all are in for an awesome summit with profound conversation and an awesome keynote speaker in the person of the National Urban League's President, Mark Moriel. Across this nation, we are doing the work of empowerment. We have been on the front line of issues affecting communities of color and civil unrest. The Urban League movement is one of empowerment and one of change, providing those elements that are essential to living, affordable and safe housing, jobs paying livable wages, education, preparing our youth for college, career and life, health and justice, justice. The Memphis Urban League assists African-Americans, the disadvantaged and underserved to expand economic opportunities which oftentimes is fleeting because of inequities, disparities, and biased justice that plays out before us day after day, week after week, month after year, year after decade and centuries. And so my question is, when will we as people of color be recognized as equal? This summit speaks to just that, justice for black and brown people justice for our sons, our men who are harassed, being arrested, murdered, while walking Black, jogging Black, riding Black, and simply desiring to breathe while Black. The Memphis Urban League Save Our Sons program speaks to these disparities and the voices of our sons and men who just want the opportunity to live, to thrive, and to provide for themselves and their families. I am reminded of a brother that I had an opportunity to share a ride with. And as we were riding, Marvin Gaye was playing on the radio and the song was, This Ain't Living. That song was released in 1971. And as I rolled with this brother, and as we listened to the song by Marvin Gaye that said, this ain't living, the brother said to me, I've made some missteps along the way, but I'm trying, I'm trying. I just want the opportunity to be employed, but I'm, in, I'm, 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 I'm not able to do this because I have to check the box that said, I have a misdemeanor, I have a felony, and I can't win for losing. And so I commend Mayor Lee Harris on his initiative uh, to ban the box. But as we rolled and the song was playing that this ain't living, this brother said, I feel like I have gone too far to the left to even get to the middle to get to the right. And oftentimes that's the story of the men that we serve in the Save Our Sons program. And so this brother was at the end of hope, like so many are. But the Urban League fights for you and we stand ready to assist. The Urban League has existed since 1910, providing hope and opportunities for a more empowered and equitable way. 
And that's what this summit is about, having conversations that will lead to change, reform, and justice. And by the way, did I share with you, don't believe I did, that that brother that I talked about as we rode and we listened to This Ain't Living passed away a week after that conversation. And that brother was my biological brother. And so we look forward to having these conversations on today, uh, powerful conversations, and some may make you uncomfortable. But I heard recently where it was said that your discomfort is the beginning of a learning moment. And so thank you, Mayor Harris and your team for putting together this awesome Southern Justice Summit. Thank you, President Mark Moriel for uh, being our keynote speaker. And thank you to the Southern region of Urban League. Across this nation, we're fighting for you. And so now it is my pleasure to present to you the man with the vision and the passion to bring this Southern Justice Summit into fruition for a more just criminal justice system. Councilman, lawyer, senator, father, mayor of Shelby County, Tennessee, the Honorable Mayor Lee Harris. So good morning and uh, thanks to Tanya Bayman and the Memphis Urban League uh, for their partnership and thanks to the many other partners that have helped with the Southern Justice Summit, particularly the National Urban League and our keynote speaker later today, uh, Mayor Mark Moriel. This is going to be a day of serious conversation about the hard questions of reform, including arrest and detention, uh, bail reform, alternatives to detention, re-entry, and much more. I am really honored and pleased to be here on behalf of Shelby County. Shelby County is comprised of seven great cities, Arlington, Bartlett, Carrierville, Millington, Germantown, Lakeland, and our county seat, Memphis. Shelby County is the largest county in our state and has been in continuous operation for nearly 201 years. Shelby County is, in my opinion, the greatest county in our state. This is a time unlike any other. Of course, this is a time of global health pandemic. We are all trying to adjust to a new normal, a new way of connecting and a new way of convening. And today is a good example of that. This is also, uh, though, a time of real awakening and racial justice. George Floyd's life and death reminds us that we can't have community or social progress or public health unless we first have justice. Anytime a person can be casually murdered on the street in America, almost nothing else matters. This is the moment when those who crave change need to convene, they need to make plans, they need to assign the work, and then we all need to take action. Shelby County is the right place for these serious conversations about injustice and reform and mass incarceration. Shelby County is one of the most diverse counties in our state and in the South. We have black and white and brown, young and young at heart, wealthy and hopeful. As Mark Moriel, the former mayor of New Orleans might say, Shelby County is a gumbo. With 200,000 folks living in poverty, the number of men and women in our community who do not have access to opportunity in Shelby County causes one to stagger. At the same time, African-Americans, particularly African-American men and boys here and around the country are too often surveilled and pulled over and thrown in handcuffs. In Tennessee, our state prison population is 44% African-American, even though we African-Americans only comprise 17% of the state population. In our county jail for years, about 80% of our jail population has been African-American while about 54% of our county population is. In our juvenile detention facility, African-American kids are basically the only demographic represented. The good news is that we know the opportunity for reform has never been greater around the country and right here at home. The Washington Redskins is no more. 
a cross-section of Americans have given their full-throated support to Black Lives Matter. I could go on. It's happening right here in the South. This is the region, after all, where most African Americans live. Mississippi, our neighbor to the South, vanquished their Confederate flag. This is the place where we are fighting to reduce our jail population. We have nearly 5,000 incarcerated individuals in Shelby County, one of the largest incarcerated populations in an urban county in the country. But in the last two years, we've worked to bring our jail population down significantly. That's because we all know that many sitting in jail are just there, not because they're a flight risk or because they uh, risk a future harm. They are there because they are poor. They are there because they can't afford a few hundred dollars for bail. That's why we launched this fight here in the South in Shelby County. This is the place, as Tanya mentioned, we are fighting to ban the box. That's the current reform right now that's in front of the Shelby County Commission. It'll block the inquiry into criminal history when deciding whom to interview for county jobs. These are good paying middle-class jobs and we can exclude, we, we, and we shouldn't exclude those with a criminal history because in many cases, these are the men and women who need opportunity the most. Listen, we can't have public safety unless we create opportunity for everyone to participate in the economy, including those with criminal histories. I'm pleased the Memphis Urban League has been a faithful partner in that work. By the way, based on the preliminary, preliminary vote on this issue on the County Commission just yesterday, we don't have the votes yet, but we can get there thanks to the sponsorship and leadership of so many groups, the Memphis Urban League, and also, of course, Commissioner Tammy Sawyer and Commissioner Mick Wright. But let me say uh, on this issue that we're gonna need more people to get in touch with your county commissioner and ask them so, to support criminal justice reforms, including ban the box. That's why we launched this fight right here in the South in Shelby County. We are fighting here because we know that there is a great need. According to one of our papers, we have had more deadly police shootings in Shelby County than anywhere else in the state. Now's the time to expand and deepen uh, how we go about this business. This is the place where we have an opportunity to get the law enforcement piece right. This is a place where we have an opportunity to get the community relations piece right. Many of you are to and fro, and I may not be able to technically welcome you to Memphis and Shelby County, but I welcome you nonetheless to our space. I welcome you to the South. I welcome you to discuss and to agitate for justice. I welcome you to the Southern Justice Summit. Thank you. And the summit will reconvene at 10. So please stay tuned in to this Zoom. And in addition to that, we have a face um, book group where we are encouraging participants to also uh, engage. And that Facebook group is Southern Justice Summit Working Group. So please stay here for our first panel that convenes at 10. And please open another window to our Facebook working group, Southern Justice Summit Working Group. Thank you. Oh, hi there. I'm Frankie Dakin, one of today's moderators. You might see me a few times throughout the day to offer a quick reminder about how to navigate through today's virtual summit. A session just ended, which means another session has begun or will begin soon. Check your virtual summit workbook for a copy of today's agenda. It includes direct links to every virtual room. Also, you can look in the chat box and find a copy of the agenda there as well. Go ahead and select your next session now. Go ahead, do it. You won't regret it. If you need technical assistance, leave a note in the chat box and an organizer will offer support if they can. Oh, 
Oh, hi there. I'm Frankie Dakin, one of today's moderators. You might see me a few times throughout the day to offer a quick reminder about how to navigate through today's virtual summit. A session just ended, which means another session has begun or will begin soon. Check your virtual summit workbook for a copy of today's agenda. It includes direct links to every virtual room. Also, you can look in the chat box and find a copy of the agenda there as well. Go ahead and select your next session now. Go ahead, do it. You won't regret it. If you need technical assistance, 